Gun's Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 74. Today we're going to chat with Michael Sedoni, make a prank call about pink guns, and talk about EDC flashlights. Today's panel is Tate Mesman, and I'm Ava Flannell. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. So Sean could not join us today. So um, we have Tate, who's one of the Gun Funny Patreons. And uh, Tate, you were actually on... Uh, like two shows ago when we did like a Patreon special. So I figured it would be a good opportunity to have you back on. But yeah, it was a fun time then and I'm sure it'll be a great time now. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so before we get into it, let's talk about Manicore Arms. <laughs> So you actually own the transformer rail. I do. And which I, one? What have you done with it? So I have mine outfitted a little bit differently than most people. I run M Lock with a little bit of Picatinny as well as Lego Lock, which is something I designed and made up for a rail because the the Manicore rail is quote unquote future proof. Mm-hmm. So if something new comes out, it can adapt and use that. Mm-hmm. So I made a rail that adapts Legos. So I can sit there and put Legos on my AR-15 and build a house or a foregrip or <laughs> angle grip or whatever I really want to. Nice. That's interesting. Yeah. So basically the transformer rail, you can add and remove panels. Uh, so depending if you need M-Lock, key mod, pick a tinny, um, or if you're creative like Tate, you could do uh, Lego panels. Very cool. So if you guys are interested, go to manicorearms.com, use the code GUNFUNNY15, and that gets you 15% off. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. All right. So we are here with Michael Sedoni. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, it's a pleasure being here. So I actually, I, you know, I, I was thinking about this cause I was, I was reading your intro and, or your biography and stuff. And, um, I was thinking that I think we were both at Denver gun days. Yep. We were at Denver. Yeah, exactly. But I don't yeah, really was- remember. I don't think that I actually met you. We were, um, uh, so I didn't sit in, I, I got there kind of late. The only time I kind of, I sat in, there was like a room where people were, you know, uh, when they were talking and stuff. And I sat in for Maj and, uh, Rob Pincus were talking. Maj Troy and Rob Pincus. But I don't think that I sat in for anything that you had to say. Yeah. They had us, uh, they had Maj and I in two separate rooms. So the people oh, that okay. wanted to kind of talk about the things that Maj covers went one way and then the rest of the crew went the other way, which I was there for mental health and oh, firearms. Okay. That's inter- I didn't even know that there was a separate room. So yeah, we were in the same yeah. place at the same time, but I don't think that I actually met you. I, I, you know, as you meet so many people at those functions, right? So mm-hmm. maybe it was quick in passing. Cause I know Sean, when I went, I was on, uh, one of his shows that he was hosting one night and he was like, yeah, we met at Gun- Denver gun days. And- so then maybe I did meet with you cause I was right next to him, but I just, yeah, I don't remember, but you're right. You meet so many people. Um, all right. So there's one question that I need to ask before we get into anything else. <laughs> you already know, right? You know what I'm going to ask about? Uh, no, just play it on <laughs> me because so it's, it's many lives. <laughs> it's, it's the whole fashion model thing. So right. tell us about that. Uh, when I was very young, many moons and pounds ago, I was a fashion model in New York City. Uh, I did it for a couple of years. Uh, it was kind of cool. It kind of fell into my lap and I was able to travel the world and do some stuff that basically at this point gets my daughter's approval. Like, wow, dad was dope one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. It was a good time. Yeah. It was a good time in my life. It was did some pretty major things that was fun. And yeah, that was so, that. I have a question. How do I get into modeling? Because I, I hear that plus size models are on the up and up these days. And I feel like it's very, I could strive very well in this industry. Yeah, I mean, maybe you could get some like big and tall. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah exactly. you could, Tate. You could because you're super tall and you're a little big, and yeah, that could work. I, I actually, I lived in New York City for eight years. 
Uh, it's, oh, a, yeah? it's a fun city. Yeah, I was with Click, and I lived in the city as well for a couple of years. So I don't know if you're familiar with fashion model agencies, but it was a good time. It was a good time in my life. I was young. I just graduated college, and you know, and, it, and it paid the after bills. you kind of get pay. pay I, look, that's the problem. Male modeling is not great for a future forever. You yeah, have to transition to something else. It's crap. Yeah. So how did you get into the firearm industry? I was in the firearms industry and that, you know, I'm third generation. So when I graduated college, I actually went to work in New Jersey at my office uh, for my family. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to do something else. Well, it's not that I didn't, but, you know, it's kind of like I was a glorified secretary. In hindsight, it's funny because I kind of wish I would have just stayed there and been around my family for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, that whole modeling thing kind of fell into my lap. I got really lucky and, you know, went and did that route. Then I married a fashion model, I had two beautiful children. And then, you know, later went into a different industry. And in 2006, I came back to work for Eagle Imports. And then by 2009, I was pre president and owner. Okay. And your parents owned Eagle Imports at the time? No, yeah, it was my uncle and my grandfather. Okay. Yeah. So, and they're, they're both no longer with us, but you know, that's how I got back into the gun industry. So, okay. Uh, sorry to hear about that. Tell us about Eagle Imports. Eagle Imports basically is we import firearms from all over the world. Uh, so we find good quality firearms, uh, buy them, bring them in, import them, handle the sales, the marketing, the distribution, the customer service, and the warranty. So if you had a gun and let's say you were from somewhere like uh, Colombia and you wanted to get to the United States, you find a company like that basically handles everything for you so you don't. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we do. So we represent Bursa, which is out of Argentina, Grand Power, which is out of Slovakia, Metro Arms, which is out of the Philippines, SPS, which is out of Spain, Llama, which is in the Philippines. So, you know, we have a few brands and then we have Avidity Arms, which is the project that I'm working on with Rob Pincus. Oh, nice. Which is our American made gun. Yeah. So then what is the process to get something imported into the U.S., especially if it's firearms? Oh, it's a massive process in terms of, well, I shouldn't say it's not impossible, but you have to go through a lot of paperwork. You have to have people that you have to work with the other country's consulate and their ATF, it's just a lot of detail that you have to kind of focus on and make sure you don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a process to it. And also you have to get approvals for firearms. So the best way to describe this is like, you can't just come up with a great idea and then say, okay, we're going to start shipping, you know, this type of gun. Um, it has to, have, there's a point system that goes along with it. And there's also a between obtaining licensing. So I, you know, basically from start to finish, let's say you're like, I love that gun and it's available in Argentina. It's going to be about a year before I can bring it to the United States from conception. Wow. So there's a lot of red tape to cut through. There's a lot of things that I can't do that the other players can do. Like my, one of my bread and butter guns is the Bursa Thunder 380. It's a classic, like in the United States. Mm-hmm. As is, is, that's as small as I can make it. The Thunder 380 CC, I can't make it any smaller because I won't be able to import it because of the point system. Wow. So there's, there's limitations and restrictions that I have as an importer. If that makes sense. Uh, say that again. You cut out. Oh, okay. I said there's, there's limitations that I have as an importer that other manufacturers in the United States have for my lines, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I heard that uh, you played a role with uh, Shanine Allen. She was the lady that she crossed uh, state lines and ended up in New Jersey, right? It was New Jersey? Yep. Yeah, and that's... she told the police officer when she got pulled over, hey, I have a firearm on me. And then they arrested her on the spot. And um, and I, I watched the video where you were helping her out because she actually she had a, a Bursa 380. Yeah, that's how... Eagle kind of got thrust into it because one day I got a call from the NRA and they're just like, what are your thoughts about Shanine Allen? And I was like, that's horrible. And then they're like, what are the thoughts about her having a burst of thunder 380? And then I was like, damn, that, that's even worse. So basically we just, they asked for our help. The NRA asked for our help to help her. Jersey, Philly, like we're, you know, we're right next to each other. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so it made sense for us to get involved. And then I became friends with Shanine. So I kind of worked with her on the process and trying to help her out. And we got her, we got the exact, we didn't get her gun returned to her, but we got the exact same model she had. And she's such a nice lady. And uh, it was really unfortunate what happened to her, but that's a perfect example of why as a society, we need national reciprocity, you know, so people can don't make those mistakes because she really was a law abiding citizen that drove into New Jersey because she worked in Atlantic city. Cops pulled her over. She was honest. She actually, one of the cops actually said, if you just wouldn't have said anything, we weren't going to, we did, we would have never searched your car. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was kind of a, a big moment for us. We're kind of proud of that because we really did help her. We helped her with some fees and everything like that because she has two kids and she, she, she has a tough background. And what was the outcome of that case? Uh, she ended up getting it all cleared. Uh, but the problem with it is that it just doesn't happen fast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it affected her life in a big way. You know, Hey, she was arrested and, you know, she had to appear in court and, you know, people don't realize once they, you're exonerated, it's not just like a faucet, you know, your life doesn't just turn back on. There's processes and paperwork. She came up on all kinds of flag things forever. Cause it takes a while to drop out of there, but she eventually got her life back, but it was a hard, hard lesson. And, uh, it's just something that we should all be conscious of because New Jersey's not exactly the place that has zero crime. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. going after somebody like Shanine and turning into a felon, that, that that's completely counterproductive for what we need to do is, you know, Americans. Well, and it's, you know, they would have turned it around if she didn't say something when she got pulled over. And let's say the cop found out that she had a firearm, then that would work against her as well. So it's kind of like you don't really know how you would handle or react in that situation. And uh, obviously, she didn't realize that she was breaking the law by crossing state lines. Yeah. And and I want to say, like, yeah, we get it. Like, people should understand the law. But there's a part of me that also says... She really, you know, talking to her about it, she had her concealed carry license, you know, because her house had been robbed twice. She never would have guessed. She had thought that that just was, and that's something that everyone needs to be aware of. When you go get your concealed carry license, you need to find out which states you're allowed to go through with your firearm because, you know, there's more people than Shanine. Hers got national attention. But, you know, a lot of people that came up to to help people in Sandy, uh, when Sandy, Hurricane Sandy came up the, the East coast, you know, you had people jumping in their trucks from North Carolina, South Carolina, and they were getting pulled over and people were finding firearms in their car, mm -hmm. you know, and they were just being honest, like, and they were trying to do the right thing. So it's just a, it's something that everyone knows, but you know, she did break the law, but it was a mistake, yeah. you know? Yeah, it definitely. So let's go back to avidity arms. That okay, gun. Let me, let me make a cocktail. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so that guy, like, cause we're, we're pretty good friends with, uh, Rob Pincus. And I know that that gun has been kind of in the making now for a little while. What is, like, what's going on with that? Uh, we're very close to, I would say the second sample size, which is a larger sample size to test and run. I think, uh, Early February, we'll have about 25 models that we're going to let people just torture test. That's that's where it stands right now. Okay. I feel like every time I say something about a bit of the arms, I jinx it. Right. It's like talking talking to your pitcher during a no hitter. You don't want to do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, but it's 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 real. It exists. There's so many factors that just played against us. Rob wanted to do the right thing. Rob wanted to like let people behind the curtain to see how a gun is made and the process. Uh -huh. And and unfortunately his popularity. And I think, you know, kind of worked against him there because people were like, we want it. We want it. Then we had all kinds of delays. That's why I say, like, let me make a cocktail because. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's uh I couldn't even imagine. And then uh, I know that there was a lot of people saying that when the Glock 40 three X came out, that it was kind of similar. I mean, I laugh at that. I really do. As a ungun gun guy or whatever everyone likes to call me, <laughs> uh, I kind of look at firearms and go like, God, they're all almost the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, like where's a Star Wars nerd like looks at the Millennium Falcon? He can tell you all the differences between the. I, I've always kind of looked at firearms and said, well, that looks like something else or that's like something else. There's so many factors when someone releases a gun that I don't think play into the whole 
just because they made that, you can't make one mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have cars like, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think yeah. when, cause I played around with it. Maybe it was at Shot Show or it was some event and it could have been two years ago or maybe we interviewed Rob about it at Shot Show and, uh, and I was playing around with it. Uh, I don't really remember. You, you definitely may have shot it. I mean, there's videos of us shooting it all the time. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it exists. It's, it just people like to make it like it's a unicorn and yeah, it, you know, I get it. We've disappointed people. You know, we wanted to, we trust me, my bank account wants it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine designing a gun and like the process that it takes and. Yeah, I'm sure you guys had to go through a lot of hoops. So you, you know, when, it's funny when you're naive, right, and you're confident. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, you walk into everything like I can do this because I'm going to apply just whatever it is, my dedication to something, or you know how hard I work, or the people around me, or the team around me, and I know we're good. And then you get punched in the face by things that are out of your control, whether mm-hmm. it's a downturn in the industry or the guy who makes your slides, the people who ran the machine had some family emergency and you know, you've been put to the back burner. There's so many moving parts to making, to putting a gun out. I will never look at a product, any product and kind of belittle what it takes to make that between tooling and machining and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it's guns are complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're like fussy little creatures. Like you change one thing, one in some area and that changes another and another part. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. So we are here with Michael Sedoni and we are going to take a quick break to talk about Hackett equipment. So Tate, recently you were in Colorado and you had a chance to check out the little Bertha bag from Hackett Equipment. It's the newest bag. What were your thoughts on that? It was super cool. It's always great having different bags for different purposes, especially if they have like a very specific purpose, Mm -hmm. like the uh, little Bertha. Mm -hmm. So if I had it, it'd be amazing because two pistols as well as a bunch of magazines. And I'm pretty sure... You could probably fit a full to scorpion in there too, because I have a, a scorpion pistol and I have just a regular backpack that I keep it in now. And I think a little Bertha would fit that very well. Yeah, actually, I mean, don't let the name fool you. It's definitely not. It's the little Bertha is basically like a regular size backpack, and then the big Bertha is just very much oversized. So, um, so I bet you actually could fit that scorpion in the little Bertha. Um, oh yeah, it's actually the bigger than the bag that I keep it in normally. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice bag and I love the coyote color. It was a very good color. Yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. I totally agree. Uh, if you guys go to hackitequipment.com, use the code gunfunny20, that gets you 20% off. Changing it up a little bit. So walk the talk America. Yes. Walk the talk America. How long has that been around? What is it? What is it that you guys do with it? Uh, conceptually, Walk to Talk America has been around since June, the night of June 15th, right? That's when the idea came about from a chance meeting with a stranger uh, with me and my national sales manager, Raphael Devale. Uh, we were in New Orleans. And we invited a complete stranger to sit with us at dinner at a crowded restaurant who's by herself. Older lady was really cool. But the concept was figuring out a way to bridge the gap between mental health and firearms. Because that person had said to me in casual conversation, if everyone blames the gun and you guys say it's mental health, how do you work with mental health hand in hand? That would make sense. And like a light bulb went off. Like I was like, hmm. And cut to a month later or a little less than a month later, you know, I had my 501c3 and we were off and running and it's been, it's a crazy, crazy story. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost, movie-esque like how lucky and everything fell into perfect place for the organization itself but we're doing some really cool things really busting out at shot show we shot show donated a, our nssf donated a booth at shot show and we're going to have mental health america who's the largest oldest running mental health organization in the united states uh actually be at the booth 
we're going to do some things together to destroy the stigmas around mental health, but also work towards funding the programs that are boots on the ground that get into the community and help those that battle mental illness. And it's something that we just check everything at the door. There's no identity politics. There's no gay, straight, black, white, pro-life, you know, whatever. You could be green. You know, we just check it at the door and we save lives or we make people's lives better. And that's what the concept is. Work together with everybody. Something to bring, you know, because you guys probably both know, you know, we get pinned as people that don't care. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's so easy for everyone to do that. They didn't, nobody cares over there. They're just dancing when there's all these tragedies. No, that's not what it's like. And, uh, this gives us an opportunity to do something about it and then to look at everybody else and say, well, what are you doing? Let's do it together. Come on. Yeah. You know, it's weird. Cause like really in the firearm industry, there isn't a lot of talk about mental health and I don't know. And I think it's, I think a lot of people aren't talking about it because there are so many gray areas there's, and you don't there's stigmas. Well, and it's, it's weird. I mean, it's, so I, you know, like, let's say you're taking medication for some, you know, for, for depression or whatever. So does that mean that you're not mentally fit to own a gun? Would that prevent you from having a gun where, so then people don't want to go to the doctor. They don't want to get medicated for it because they don't want to lose their, run the risk of maybe down the road, they can't own a gun. Um, so there's just, there's a lot of issues with that. What does walk the talk America? Like I know you said, you know, it's an organization you guys are going to help, but how exactly are you going to help address this issue? Well, and, and if people want, I always say, if you want more detail, just go to like the section of our website where it's the donate section, because I show people exactly where their money is going to mm-hmm. or what it's going to. I, we, we're transparent. We have to be. We're a 501c3. And, but some of the cool things that we've done, I'll give you a prime example. We have a range program that we are launching with Mental Health America basically a cha-cha, right? We have a booth there. You're going to be able to go up and see it. And we're working in conjunction with Gun Vault, where if you have any sort of issues going on and you have nowhere to put your guns or you're, you know, like in Jersey, if you come over to my house and you're like, Mike, you're not doing so well, you know, I love you. Like, why not hold on to your guns for you for a second? If you leave the house, we both committed felonies. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to create safe spaces where you can go into any range and basically say, I need someone to hold these, check the guns in. And then forever along it takes whatever you need. Cause there are a lot of people that do self-regulate, you know, that's one of the programs that we're very proud of. And it's going to have information on it that says like, look, it's okay. You're, you're, it's okay to come forward because that's one of the biggest problems in our industry or as gun owners or pro 2A people is we don't want to lose those rights, right? So we had, we don't know where to turn to sometimes. And this will say, look, d- there's no judgment. There's no nothing. There's d- 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 cops aren't going to be coming, jumping through the window, taking your guns. This is a place you can go to until you get better mm-hmm. or you're, you're in a right frame of mind. So like that's one program. That's one of many. The other thing I'm proud of is because there are so many people that want to find out about themselves or they don't know where to start. Well, we have a screening. We have these bands that we've gotten into, like, for example, in the Las Vegas school district, we've gotten them out into the community where young people, especially young people, like everywhere from as little as 11 can go and take a free and anonymous uh, mental health screening and find out about what, they have with nobody else finding out because some people can't go to their parents or they can't go to their brother, or whatever, you know, basically making people aware of what the situation might be and that it's okay and how to mitigate that. Like prime example would be my daughter and she had taken this is where I got the idea for it, by the way, but she had taken one of the tests for anxiety and, you know, she was worried that she suffers from anxiety. And I said, I didn't even press. I said, go take that test on with the organization that daddy's working with it's on our website but it's through mha who by the way does not believe people that suffer from mental illness should lose their gun rights as a matter of fact they advocate that you should be able to keep your gun rights okay so like that's a big thing i want to make that clear to anyone listening Mm -hmm. um they've actually put that in writing (laughs) so it's out there because there's the stigma behind that right but anyways she goes on there she takes the test 
a couple of days later, she comes back and she's like, dad, I, uh, I took that, that test online and I answered it. Like you said, just answer it honestly. Don't answer me. Like you think other people are watching or judging. And she's like, big smile on her face. She's like, I, I only suffer from mild anxiety. And I look at her. I'm like, that's a great thing, isn't it? And she said, yeah. And I, I said, do you see all the things that you can do when you start having those feelings? And she's like, yeah, it lays it out. Yeah. And she walked away like happy. Mm -hmm. Right. And I thought, how do I get that? Like, how do I let people know that this exists? So we came up with this band idea where you can go to WTTA.org forward slash love. And you could go take a free anonymous mental health screening. It has everything from PTSD, depression, uh, substance abuse, anxiety, everything is on there. So like, those are certain things that we're doing. There's more. I mean, we, we can talk about this all day if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but those are just some of the like key highlights because we, we need to understand that less than 5% of people that suffer or battle mental illness will actually do something violent to another person. Mm -hmm. So all those school shootings that you see or that are sensationalized in the media, that's a needle in the haystack compared to how many people suffer from mental illness that will eventually commit suicide or have a horrible life because they're afraid to come forward because of the stigma that's been placed on it. So part of the problem when we say it's another lunatic with a gun, it's just a crazy guy with a gun, that's adding fuel to the fire of the stigma because people most likely around you are going to say, well, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to come forward. I'm having issues. And that's one of the reasons why you see a lot of our soldiers committing suicide at an alarming pace because they don't want to lose clearance. So they don't say anything or they don't go get help because they're afraid they don't want to lose their gun rights. So take the gun equation out of it. There's a lot of people that don't come forward because they just don't want to lose their job or they don't want to be looked at differently. Mm -hmm. And we got to stop that. Cause it, your mind is just like your physical health. You know, you gain a little weight and your friend busts your balls, right? What do they say? They go, get a little chubby there. What do you do? You hit the gym, right? We need to start thinking of our mind in the exact same way. If it's not good, let's, let's do things to change that, but we got to get rid of the stigma first. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm trying to think what else. Hmm. <laughs> what else? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I, I think it's, I mean, I think it's great what you're doing. And I do think that there needs to be more organizations like this. And, uh, you know, cause you're right. It's not the gun. The gun is just a tool and ultimately people decide what they're going to do with that gun. And if they're, you know, if something's not right, then maybe, and, and it could be something that they just need to I'm not like, I'm not big, a, a big fan of like medication, but sometimes, you know, maybe there is like an imbalance and they just need to take some medication to sort of equal that out. Tate, you were going to say something. I was just going to ask why you were so passionate about walk talk America. Like, is that something that you, there's, there's obviously passion behind there. Where, where does that come from? Uh, it comes from two places. First of all, I grew up around, uh, mental illness without even knowing what that was in my family, for sure. And, you know, looking back on it, we have all these crazy stories in my family that are now like endearing or like this person did that. And you realize like, no, that was something, something was not right. You know, I, I grew up with an Italian family in New Jersey is wild stories. But after that, my, the mother of my children, my ex-wife, uh, she battles mental illness. It's pretty bad. And, um, we've watched it destroy her life. Uh, so part, there's a part of me that, you know, be, has become fascinated with this because we were, I mean, we were young kids from Jersey modeling in New York City. That was my girl. Like that, that was somebody that was like, came up with me and to watch them kind of deteriorate over the years. Uh, that's always a tough pill to swallow. And then when you have two beautiful daughters, it's kind of my way of like showing them, you know, your father cares. Like I don't destroy her. I don't talk bad about her. We co-parented for a long time before she couldn't do it anymore. So that that's a drive. But the main thing too, that has always affected me talk about this stuff, kind of get emotional, but the president of my company before me uh, was a dear friend 
and a great guy. And he actually took his own life with one of our firearms and it came out of nowhere. And it always kind of haunted Eagle Imports, all the employees, because we're a small company. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's one of those things where we never had answers. We, we never really mitigated the trauma for us. You know, we just kind of kept moving and did our best. Like we, it's weird. Like we made all these decisions after he had passed. Like we remodeled the whole office. Um, I think that was therapeutic for us, but we didn't, you know, we always just thought about it and talked about it. So there's really three factors. So that I think it's a great question, Tate, but uh, there's three factors that drive me. And the other one is just looking around and looking at our industry and looking at how people perceive us and then looking about how society, how divided we are. Look, one thing, doesn't matter what we are, there's one thing we can agree on. Nobody wants to see people die. Nobody wants to see people battle mental illness, go through life without help. You know, these are all the things that we can come together on regardless of how you affiliate yourself. Um, so that's what really drives me. And then I'll tell you what else drives me. I, mean, I was ahead in this conversation. Helping people and seeing people be brave enough to go do things that they would have normally done that battle mental illness is like a drug to me now. Um, I have so many really cool, like stepping up and saying, Walk to Talk America and the things you guys are doing has inspired me to, in my workplace, have a meeting with all the employees where we talk about, hey, do you have a son or, you know, come forward to say that some of these things might affect work. So let's all get on the same page so we know what people are struggling with or we know what people are dealing with. So it's things like that 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 really drive me. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, this is gun funny. Uh, I feel like I'm coming on the show, like, you know, feline. No. So, I mean, <laughs> feline AIDS, the number one killer in cats. <laughs> like, don't feel bad because I cried, uh, on one of my episodes. Mm, I don't know, maybe like eight episodes ago or something. And we touched upon something that was really emotional for me. And so I cried and, you know, so <laughs> sometimes there are tears. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, and that's, I think. I mean, that's the perfect way to sum it up. We're gun people, right? We were always looked at as we're tough. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, there is that kind of aura about when you people are pro to a, it was just like, oh, they're tough guys, tough guys, tough girls, tough people. They cry. You yeah. know, they have dark moments. They can't be in charge all the time. They, they need a break, <laughs> yeah. you know? So definitely. So what are your future plans? My future plans are to get through SHOT Show. <laughs> right. I have two booths there, by the way. I have Walk to Talk America booth and my regular Eagle Imports booth. No, my future plans are to get the Avidity gun done, uh, continue to bring in great products, stay in the firearms industry, and continue to grow Walk to Talk America, and just make the, you know, I, I'm going to borrow the line from Rob Pincus, make Earth better. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. what my goals are. Nice. Until I, uh, I collapse dead. Right. I know. Especially, well, especially after a shot show, I'm already right. like, I haven't been sick at all this year. And I keep thinking, great. Is it going to come at shot show? Cause last year I got sick like two weeks beforehand and I didn't get sick at shot show, which is really, I, I don't think I've ever made it a year at shot without getting sick. So I'm right now I'm just like fingers crossed. Cause it's, it's really pretty much inevitable. Um, Absolutely. Tate, Tate, do you go to shot show? I don't. I'm not in the industry, so I never really had the chance to. Yeah. Okay, because everybody gets sick. I was going to say, I, I, it's the same. It's, yeah. yeah. No, NRA is my game. Okay. All right. Cool. I got a booth there, too. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was there uh, in Dallas, and I think uh, I walked through your booth, and I was really digging the uh, the Grand Powers. Oh, the Slovakian gun. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, they're super badass. I mean, they really like, look, it's like me talking about my children, right? Like, I'm not going to say anything bad, but uh-huh. they really are rotating barrels, all machine parts, no mem, you know, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. So for people who want to find you, where can they? Uh, they could find us, you know, on the web, obviously go to eagleimports.com, uh, Eagle Import, it's Facebook, everything. But for if you're more interested in the walk to talk that stuff, uh, you can go to WTTA.org or walk to talk America.org. You could also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at walk the talk us. 
And then everything else, Bursa, Grand Power, they all have their own pages. If you just put them in the search, you'll find them in Eagle Imports. So, Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. I know you're super busy, especially right before SHOT Show. So I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with us. No, no. Thank you for having me. It was awesome to talk to you guys. Sorry, it couldn't be a uh, more funny show. Oh, <laughs> no. Totally You guys fine. can take it from here. <laughs> Totally fine. Yep. Um, all right, cool. Well, I'll probably, I'll stop by your booth and I will see you at shot show and, uh, and then, you know, maybe meet you for, for the first time in person, maybe the second time, but this time I promise I'm going to remember it. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> a deal. And Tate, it was a pleasure meeting you, man. So yeah, it was great talking to you too, man. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. Matador arms. So uh, recently I put the flare stack on one of my ARs, uh, flare stock. It's a hybrid flash comp. Basically, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows what that means, but if you don't, it suppresses the flash, uh, helps you stay on target. And it's just amazing how much just that, you know, that hybrid flash comp, like it just greatly reduces a lot of that recoil and it just keeps the gun, you know, shooting just nice and flat. Yeah. I, I really, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely recommend checking out the flare stack. If you guys go to uh, matadorarms.com, use the code gunfunny10. That gets you 10% off. Matador Arms also sponsors our prank call. And today, because Sean wasn't here, I decided to have Tate do the prank call. And I'm uh, so embarrassed. <laughs> It was pretty good. Uh, and then we also had you do a few other prank calls, which we'll, we'll play here in, uh, in future shows. But, that. but this prank call, uh, Tate, he, uh, or should I say Brittany? Brittany, she needed a flashy gun to, uh, you know, get some attention at the range. So, uh, yeah, here it is. It's time for prank calls with Malcolm. And Gertrude. Honey! Gun shop. Hi, uh, my name is Brittany, and I've been going to the range recently, and the guys aren't giving me much attention. So I was wondering if you guys have any, like, bright-colored guns in the store that I could buy. Bright-colored guns? Yeah, like yeah. like maybe a pink or a, a bright blue, maybe even a yellow. We have some brighter colors. Like, like what kinds? Oh, we've got a very bright aquamarine AR-15 in the gun. We've got purple and pink. Ooh, I like purple. W- what's the purple one? I believe it's a Glock. Is that good? Uh, it's a very good gun. That sounds fantastic. Anything else we could help you with? Um, no. Uh, do you think that uh, the guys will pay more attention to me at the range? Mm, with a colored gun, it probably won't help. What, what do you think would help, then? What do you need help with at the range? Uh, I'm looking for a new boyfriend, so, I mean, is something that can, like, that would draw them in, make them appreciate me? Probably not. You don't think anything would help? <laughs> Wasn't that such a funny prank call? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That was terrible and amazing at the same time. Uh, it was funny. Uh, it's like, it's weird because like they don't even bat an eye, you know, it's like, no, uh, he was just and, taking it and you didn't fun. even, you didn't even really like try to like change your voice that much. It's just oh, like, no. yeah, hey, what's up? I'm Brittany. I'm looking for a pink gun. And Ooh, so, sexy. yeah. <laughs> and yet they're just kind of going with the flow. Oh man. That, I've never done prank calls before. And that was. Gotta say, it was pretty fun. Had the heart going a little bit. Are you kidding me? You've never done prank calls? No. Wow. I used to do it all the time. In fact, uh, I used to go to an all-women's college my freshman year. 
and it was like in basically the little town. It was like a retirement community. So there was like no, there was really nothing to do and there was no hot guys anywhere nearby. And so I just remember even in college making prank phone calls with my girlfriends in college in our dorms. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. Just fun or pathetic. I don't know. A little bit of both. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Polymer 80. So I, I was just looking at their website and I saw right now they have fluted blem barrels. So a blem, obviously they're not going to sell you something that's junk. Don't let the name, the word blem fool you. Uh, basically it's something that usually you can't even figure out, you know, why it would be blemmed. But they have the fluted barrels for as low as $125, which is a, a really good deal. Um, yeah, it is. Um, and then obviously they have pretty much everything else. I think the only thing that they're still missing is the lower parts kit to complete an entire Polymer 80 handgun, which is pretty impressive. So if you guys go to Polymer80.com, use the code GUNFUNNY, that will get you 10% off. Tacti Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. All right, Tacti Talk. Tate, you wanted to talk about everyday carry flashlights. So, yeah. first of all, why? Why? I carry a, a flashlight every day because I use it pretty much once a week, at least. So, when I'm looking for an EDC flashlight, there's a couple things that I have grown to almost need in an EDC light. Two of the main things are have a pocket clip to where the, the bezel or the flashlight part is pointing straight up in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Actually clip it to the bill of your hat. So you can almost use it as a headlamp. Hmm. I never thought about that. As well as a magnet on the back. Not very many flashlights have this, but the ones that I... I, I originally carried the Olight S20 and then the Olight S2. Mm-hmm. And I recently lost the S2. So I'm looking at new ones. And OLED are the, really the only ones that have the magnetic tail cap. So you can actually stick it to like the hood of a car, a wall, a beam. Basically, you can have hands-free light as long as you have a metal surface nearby. Hi, I never, I actually never really thought about that. So personally, I don't have a, I don't, I own like a lot of like tactical flashlights and stuff. And then I have some on my guns. But as far as like if I need something, if I need a flashlight, I usually just use the flashlight that's on my phone. But mm-hmm. I guess if you're very much like hands on, that's, I, I really didn't even think about that you could attach it to your cap or, you know, if it's magnetic, uh, the hood of your car or something. And you recently, cause you were just here in Colorado. So you've done a lot of traveling. Um, yeah. So and I'm that's, sure that's actually why I lost is I left it in a range in, uh, Michigan. Oh, dang. That's unfortunate. Yep. So which lights are you looking at now? So right now I'm looking at the S2R2 which is the updated version of the S2 that I normally carried. But I'm also a copper fan. I love everything that has like copper in it and whatever. Mm -hmm. So Olight is actually making uh, what they call the M2R, which is a larger flashlight, probably a little too big for me to carry as an EDC flashlight, but it's all copper. So I'm sure it's heavy as all get out, but... It's copper and copper's cool. Oh, nice. It says, yeah, raw copper. I was like, do you think it's actual copper or do you think it's just colored copper? But yeah, raw copper. Yeah, they do special, special editions where they have different metals. A lot of times copper, sometimes titanium. They really do that with S1 line a lot. So I see right now on Amazon, it's going for basically $130, Mm -hmm. uh, 1500 lumens. So how, how important? Or lumens when you're looking for a light? It very depends on the light and what you do. With the Olight S2, it's more of a floodlight versus a throw light. So a throw light will project light very far. As for a floodlight, will light up a larger area. Okay. So I like having high lumens just in case I need it for outdoor use and I need to see a little bit further. Mm-hmm. But what's nice about all these options are is they're adjustable. 
so you can bring the light down or mm-hmm. bring it up to the top. I usually keep it about in the middle just for using it indoors, short range outdoors. But if I'm looking for something outdoors, it's really nice having that high output. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah, they all look like nice flashlights. Little bit of an old light fanboy. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you find that flashlight that you're looking for. Thank and you. make the decision because uh, it sounds like you use a flashlight pretty often. I do. <laughs> all right. You want to read the iTunes reviews? I sure can. I mean, you know, since Sean isn't here, you got to take his place. So that's what Sean does. And, you know, you just kind of have to stick it out and do it. Yeah. This will either go well or very badly. <laughs> I'm voting on the very badly side. So from zone for 105 points, five stars, appreciate you from Nick B. I think it's supposed to be appreciate. I know, but there's two P's and it just looks weird to me. Okay. So. Great podcast with hilarious hosts and awesome guests. Ava and Sean go together like Betty Crocker and the word moist. (laughs) I enjoy listening every time, except for when Sean says, dang. Oh, and the prank calls are cringeworthy. (laughs) Dang. And Safashasha G. I think it's supposed to be S. Ferris Jr. That works too. (laughs) Five stars. Awesome podcast. Great podcast to listen to while at work or just driving around town. Good information and good guests on the show as well. Now for Now I Have a Machine Gun, five stars. My review. Been listening to the podcast since you had Adam with Charger Arms a few months ago. Started, oh, there my dyslexia kicked in. Started going back, listening to earlier shows as I was hooked. I enjoy the chemistry Ava and Sean have together and love their prank phone calls. Cool. Right on. All right. So, Tate, since you are the guest today, oh, well, you're not the guest, but you're, you know, co-hosting, I want you to pick a winner out of those three. Ooh. I think Papreciate wins. With All zone right. For five, 105 points. All right. Papreciate ya. I think it's still, I'm going to go with Appreciate because, you know, but, uh. And it's. All because of the word moist. That's, you know, that water, that, that word doesn't really bother me. I, I love know, that word. I think of just moist cake and then I just want cake. Ooh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. So we're going to wrap up. So guys, if you want to find us, just go to gunfunny.com. Uh, you'll find links to everything. I don't know. Let's see what's on there. We have the store. We just uh, added the new high point operator patch. Uh, it's $8 shipped. And uh, I love that patch. If you go shopping at like Brownells, Gun Mag Warehouse, Rainier Arms, Palmetto, even Amazon, a really good way to support the show is if you go to gunfunny.com, click on the support us link. And if you use, if you click on the link, you know, let's say you're shopping on Amazon, click on the Amazon link, then buy whatever, you know, from Amazon, we'll actually get a percentage of those sales. So it's a really great way to support the show without having to really do anything. If you do want to support the show even further, you should consider becoming a Patreon. Tate is a Patreon. I am. Tate, you, uh, you're pretty active in the, the Facebook Patreon group. I got to say, sometimes like I, I really do enjoy the Patreon group and there's days where I'm just sitting there in the evening and I usually get on and I mean, I will be like just cracking up laughing like where it's just, I, I think everyone in the Patreon group's hilarious. Uh, it's filled with awesome people and it's not like the normal gun group that you find on Facebook where it's just a whole bunch of cringe. Yeah. Like it's actually genuine people that share their genuine opinion and it's generally a great place and there's no egos which is nice like you if anything people just make fun of themselves and or we do it for them so it's definitely uh an enjoyable group uh so just a dollar a month will get you access into that group otherwise uh five dollars you get access to our monthly raffle twenty five dollars you get access to or you'll get a a shout out on the show and uh and then we also have our king of the patreon which we'll go over here in in a second but because of your guys's pledges we were actually able to afford an editor who happens to be kenny ortega so kenny thank you uh especially for this show i feel like you're gonna have to do a lot of editing so i really appreciate the time and effort that you put into the show and guys thank you so much for uh 
for your pledges because we're able to afford Kenny. And appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you, yo. Uh, thanks, guys, to our $25 patrons. Tate, you want to read those off? Corbin Bonafide, Iraq Veteran 8888, Charger Arms, Ryan Morrison, and John Snow. All right. And then our King of the Patreon, who is, uh, if you guys want to become King of the Patreon, all you have to do is donate $76 or more. And then that makes you King and we'll say whatever you want. In this case, our King of the Patreon is two a jewels. And, um, I just talked to John earlier before the show and he said that from now until Valentine's day, when you place an order with two a jewels, if you mention gun funny, you'll actually receive 10% off, which is pretty huge because they never offer sales and 10% off is, uh, it's a really good deal. Yeah. And I mean, their stuff is beautiful. So guys, if you really want to wow, uh, your ladies over. And if they're into guns, I would definitely look at two a jewels. You could find them on Facebook or Instagram and uh, check out their stuff and they can make anything, you know, even if you have like, let's say you did uh the first time you guys went on a date, you went shooting and you saved a casing from that. If you send in that casing to two a jewels, they'll make jewelry, jewelry out of it. And it's all uh gold plated. So, all right, guys, we are, uh, we're out of here. So if you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash gun funny. Otherwise, we're going to see you guys next week. Peace. Want to send feedback? Suggest a place to prank call? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact. <laughs>